Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Defect Spaceship Destruction Kit, which at first I was like, SDK, I'm a little bit confused, but I guess it's not an acronym for the game in the same way that, you know, like Ace is Arena Combat Evolved. Anyway, I'm getting up my own butthole already. This is a game that is presently on Kickstarter, and I very, very rarely cover Kickstarter games. They get pitched a lot, but um, it's definitely the exception to the rule for me to cover them, because I really only cover them if there's something to play and it looks particularly interesting. This, it's, I've played about an hour of it so far, there's a really, really interesting shipbuilding component. It is a little bit of a space shooter sort of strategy game, more of a space shooter than a strategy game, with a really, really kind of impressive shipbuilding component that I like a lot, which is why I'm showing it off. But I would, you know, caution you if you're watching this and you feel compelled to uh, support the Kickstarter, which is still, it's got like three or four weeks or something left like that. Um, that this is a Kickstarter project. It may never see the light of day. Hopefully it will, you know, I'm always optimistic about it, but uh, even more so than early access, of course, there are risks inherent with backing this stuff. But mostly I wanted to show it off, not necessarily to directly compel people to uh, contribute to the Kickstarter campaign, but rather um, just because it's kind of interesting, and it's got a little bit of a Captain Forever Remix vibe. You could, if, you, if you're not familiar with Captain Forever Remix, a very, very casualized Kerbal Space Program kind of vibe going on as well. Um, we'll start up a new game here, confirm delete progress, sure, I will delete my progress. This is a press demo that they sent me, um, and I'll explain just what the heck is happening here as we get going. Because it'll get a little bit more complex, it's going to start out relatively easy here. And because it's a press demo, there's no, like, sandbox, unless maybe we can start on a later level. No, it doesn't look like we can. Um, there, there's no real, like sandboxy kind of mode to start in right now, so we're gonna end up having to do some tutorials to start with here. So he says, welcome to Asbestos Captain. Everything here is absolutely great. We, uh, these are each one of these hexagons represents a level that we can go through on our quest to get through to, to the Scrap King, which I almost got to within an hour of play, but I had a ship get destroyed a couple of times and was like, ah, that's enough, I'll do the video tomorrow. So we're gonna launch our ship here. And we don't get to build it, we just get to control it during our early, uh, aspect here. And then I will, uh, Hopefully, in the second or third mission here, I'll be able to highlight the shipbuilding, which is really, really cool. Uh, and definitely the strength, the, the strong suit of the game so far. Game looks alright, I think it's made in Unreal Engine, um, based on the way that it launched, but that might be the Unity launcher now that I think about it, but, uh, anyway, this is our ship. QR-79 Dawn Bomb. Really, you want to say Dawn Bomb when you say that, I gotta admit. Welcome to Asbestos, Captain. I'm your C Z Cole personal built-in digital assistant, but you can call me Zeke. I've been assigned to show you how things work. And this is where we'll do our tutorial. So this on the right side here is uh, a zoom function. So we can zoom out and get a little bit more of a macro view of things. And zoom in and get a little bit more fine control. Um, we can move our ship. There is no, like, um... There's no more advanced controls like dealing with your yaw and your yoke and stuff like that. Stuff that I'm not necessarily 100% familiar with regardless. But you can spin around a little bit here. And I think they want me to go back to this uh, waypoint here. And after doing this, I'm pretty sure that we will have combat. This first mission is, is pretty easy. So it controls fine. You know, it controls as you would expect a spaceship to control. You get a lot of inertia. Maybe you slow down a little faster than you'd expect to slow down in space. But I'm not here to critique the game on its realism. Uh, the controls feel weighty and mostly... Uh, Okay, here. Now we'll test out your weapons. I actually want to see if maybe... Oh, I hit escape! Did I... <laughs> Is it gonna kick me out? No, it was actually just a cutscene. Okay, because I was looking to uh, actually increase the sound. I'm realizing that the sound here is probably quite low because the, the main menu, mu menu music is a little loud. So, uh, when you start, there actually is um, a weapon that auto-fires. So this is just a... Uh, a laser, basically, that is going to auto-fire on this drone target. And, you know, spoilers, when we actually kill it, it is going to explode, and it is going to catch us in the explosion, I'm pretty sure. That's, yeah. We, our core has been exposed, and we have been murdered, basically. The central conceit of Defect is that every mission, at the end of every mission, your ship is either destroyed, or your crew, um defects with it, which is kind of a weird conceit for the game, but it works because it forces you to build a new ship every time, and I really feel like the shipbuilding is probably the, uh, the strongest aspect of the game. So far. Welcome to the Suppressed Systems Navy Shipyard. I'm your engineer, Captain Tail. Your old ship is a bit of a mess. Let's fix you up with a new one. So, here we have all our components. So, I'll just go through these quickly. This is our core, which is basically like, if that gets exposed and hit, we're in serious trouble. This is our, uh, where we're gonna put our crew, so they're not gonna let me do that yet. This is, uh, armor and spacers, which is, you know, not only for armor, but also for making your ship look cool. Engines, wings, which you can probably figure out what those do. Guns, and, uh, miscellaneous crew and multipliers. We can get things here like a shield that will actually protect us, but we'll be able to create cooler ships after we finish our tutorial here. So I'm just gonna put the core down here, and then they're gonna force me to put this here, and you can see, it's actually a very good tutorial for building stuff. Uh, in the game, you realize there's not really, like, super rigid requirements. Um, you can... It, every core carries, like, a set amount of power. 
And then the components require a set amount of power to use. I'm actually just going to Alt-Tab and raise the volume right now because it's like completely silent for me, which is my bad. But um, you can scale those pieces up to be larger and larger, and it doesn't seem to make a functional difference on the actual um, amount of power it takes. It just makes them bigger, which is cool because it's a little bit more accessible for an idiot like me, basically. We're going to put a whole piece here. They don't always have these blueprints in the background for you to draw from. Um, and we'll put an engine on the back. We get more tools, by the way, as, as time goes on here. And you can see that they've made like these easy to follow guides for us that we can just strap these things to and we will put uh our weapon up on the front here and then we'll just lower it so you can it's actually like photoshop to a certain extent might be a little too loud now but you can uh get it to like a uh you, you can manipulate the layers basically so you know we want our engine to not look like that and everything else looks pretty okay here i want you to be able to hear the music because the soundtrack is actually pretty good in a you know john carpenter-esque uh the thing sort of way Excellent, you're all ready to get back out there, hit the launch button, and take your new ship out for a spin. I will do so. And I will also fret endlessly over the uh, the volume levels, because that is what I do as well. So we should be loading into the new mission here, which I'm assuming is taking a little bit longer because we're recording. It was pretty quick when I was doing it last night. Game looks fine. Occasionally there will be like some nebulas and stars and stuff like that that are a little too bright, and I lose my ship or the enemies uh, in them. Uh, it makes it muddies the visual language of the game somewhat to some extent, but it's relatively minor. I think it looks pretty serviceable. Reminds me a little bit of like space pirates and zombies, but probably that's because we're in space dealing with pirates. No zombies though. That's the SO84 Ambiguous Wind. That's the name of the ship right here. It's departing asbestos after delivering supplies. We're doing a customs inspection, so get close and I'll scan the hold. The press demo, the way it's structured. Uh, let's assume that that's indicative of what the game is going to be like in its final release. This is not like a sandboxy you know, roguelike-ish type game. It seems like it's gonna be structured around, um... We gotta shoot the... the engines now, uh, to slow it down. It seems like it's gonna be structured around linear missions, which I think is okay. Uh, I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but where the cool... Like, what I'm getting at is it's not really... It doesn't seem, at least in the story mode, to be structured like Captain Forever Remix, where it's basically like, okay, make your best ship possible, and then keep making it better, and kill bigger enemies, take their parts, put them onto your ship. It doesn't seem like that, but that may change as the game uh, gets further and further into development. That uh, radial menu there, not menu, but you know what I mean, the, the radial dial there is uh, indicative of how much HP that part of the enemy ship has left. Um, I think it works fine, and where the kind of creative aspect comes in is that you can actually, um, you know, make new ships every single time, and one ship that works for one uh, particular mission may not work for another one. You might want to make a more light and maneuverable ship if you're going for, like, a really specific part, like you've got to hit an enemy core or something like that, or you might want to make a huge armored ship. Oh my god, it's a little too loud, maybe. With, like, lots of, um, like, gun batteries on the side of it to help you out, okay. Just hold off that small fighter for a minute, and we'll send in the big guns here. The press demo, you gotta you gotta accept that it is a press demo, and this, the pacing might not work like this in the actual game. However, um, it, it works really well. Like, it's really, um, I don't know, kind of grandiose is maybe the way I'm going for it. As you can see, they just keep... I gotta lower the volume here a little bit, I'm sorry. They just keep introducing bigger and bigger ships um, in this section, which is really cool. And I think in our next section, we will actually be able to build ships like this. Okay, where do we go? There we are. Clear up any fighters our ships will deal or our ships will deal with this guy. We can make ships like that. Maybe not quite that big, but definitely a lot bigger than the ship we're using right now. So again, I don't know if the pacing is actually going to work like this in the uh, actual game, but if it does, it's got a cool sense of it so far. It's not just like, you know, I like that it doesn't open up with like, "Hey, go kill this like little guy. He's fucking with our asteroid colony." Instead, it's like, "Hey, look at this big ass like UFO, like the, the Starship Enterprise here. That's what you're going to be dealing with um, in the early game. Now, we don't actually engage right now in direct combat with these guys, but still, it's it's a really cool uh, design. Uh, these enemies, they drop scrap, which basically we can use to build bigger and better ships, but I don't believe that that is uh, implemented in the current build of the game. So the scrap that we pick up is just, we use it to repair ourselves if we want to, um, but we don't really need to worry about that right now. Game runs pretty smooth right now as well. I have no idea, I don't have a frame counter up to see if it's 60 or 30 FPS, etc, etc, but uh, it, it feels good right now. And again, like that's a little bright for me, but at the same time, I, I respect where the game is going with its visuals, and I think it works pretty serviceably. So we're just, you know, kind of piloting around right now and uh, taking care of these easy guys. You might be saying, well, that's kind of lame that you don't get to control your own, your own weapons, but actually there is a system in the game that we'll be introduced to right after this that uh, will allow us to do that. Is this what it wants us to kill? I believe it is. Um, there's a system that we're going to encounter soon. 
uh, that will allow us to take direct control. So we're just going to keep ourselves right here. In fact, yeah, I can do it right now. We can take direct control over our um, weapons. Over any component, for that matter. But for now, we'll take direct control over our weapons. And that allows me to... Uh, Aim them myself, and uh, you get a little bit more efficacy with that as well. Like, you get a little bit more um, firepower, a little bit faster fire rate. And this is where the game's name comes into effect here. It's called Defect. Every time you complete a mission, the uh, the crew that you have abandons you as the pilot, and then you have to build a ship and basically hunt them down. I'm not detecting any more ships incoming. I don't even think there are any more ships in the system. No ships at all? Correct, no signals. We're the only functioning military ship left. Ha! We control the system. Adios, Captain. This ship is ours now. So yeah, it's a bit of a, an arbitrary conceit to force you to build a new ship all the time, but it's... I would rather build the new ship. Even if it seems to not make any sense that you're constantly getting abandoned and you don't have to deal with, like... Like, it would seem like there should be, like, a crew... Um, what am I going for here? Like, a crew morale system where if morale falls too low, then they defect. Right now, it's just like at the end of the mission, they always defect. But it's kind of a humorous conceit as well. All right, we'll send out a retrieval drone to pick you up. That's all we have to spare. They hit us pretty hard here at the shipyard, too. Okay, so now we should be able to build another ship uh, for our next mission here. I'm hoping that they will let us do that. I think that's how the, the pace of the demo worked. Yeah, okay. We have some new ship components for you. Build a turret onto your ship. We'll take it for a test drive. And again, this is going to be a little bit of a tutorialization here. Um, but I can start to have my own control over it here soon in a second. So they're going to tell me like, hey, you know, be careful with the way you're building your ship. I'm pretty sure that we have unlimited resources. So I'm going to build my ship um, in the most impressive way that I feel I can. So we've got three different cores here. The one we started with only has 30 power, which is very small. Um, and the other one has 70, which allows you to build bigger ships. And this one has 110. So we're going to use that. Basically, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have uh, the ability to have... Unlimited resources, effectively, right now. It's a little quiet. The audio balance is, is starting to bug me just a little bit. But um, we'll, we'll build this ship um, with the biggest core because, again, we have unlimited resources. So it's very easy to, to build it. We'll stretch it like so. Um, so we've got a huge core. And the core is basically like our power. So we want to cover that with some sort of armor. Maybe I'll move it back just a little bit here. Okay, so after that, let's build to our heart's content. I definitely want to build like a radial kind of like, again, Starship enterprise -y type of thing. So let's go hard with this. You can see down here, this is uh, our crew, and this is our power. So the power will go down as we put more components here. We can see if we mouse over. Power required 25. So yeah, it uses 25. But it also gives us 25 crew, and they will go down as we put, put more systems into our ship as well. Eventually, this will stop being so... I just want to make this the upper layer for a second. Eventually, this will stop being so sandboxy, I'm sure, and you'll have to deal with, like, your own resource management and be like, oh, do I really want to invest uh, that much power into something like this, or do I really want to invest that much scrap into something like this? Like, maybe you just don't have the money. Then we'll lower this. There we go. So now we've got our core protected by this. Now let's put uh, some kind of spacer on it here, some kind of armor. What about this? Square armor. It's armor and it's square. It needs no crew, but it's slightly heavier, so that'll be a little bit... Um, poorer for us in terms of our maneuverability. A light but well armored hull component. This seems good. Okay, and we'll stretch this out a little bit. And we'll put like a spacer between it as well. Cylinder armor. That seems good. And we want this to probably be like look a little chunkier, you know? And again, in case you didn't catch it when I said it earlier, um, this ship looks ridiculous, but that's okay. In case you didn't catch it when I said it earlier, um, I believe that the size of the component doesn't factor into anything. Like, it's going to factor into how visually impressive it looks, but I don't think it scales up its weight or anything like that. Just throw a wing on it here. And I don't think it scales up the power that it requires either, which is obviously not realistic, but at the same time makes the ships much easier to build, which I appreciate. You can also copy and then, uh, you know, flip components and move them in case you want to have some symmetry on one side of your ship. Um, there's also a symmetry button. Admittedly, I don't know what that does. However, we got a, a kind of decent looking ship here. Let's put a couple of engines on this bad boy. We still got a lot of power left and a lot of crew left, actually. So, um, we could have like a big engine here. And then again, just lower it so that it goes below the wing. And we could have a big engine here. And I do believe that like Captain Forever Remix, this will change the way that it flies. But don't quote me on that 100%, but it seems to. Um, is this... It doesn't quite look right, does it? We'll move it. I should have just copied it, but... 
Sure, that looks semi-realistic. If you've watched me play Captain Forever Remix, you should know by now that I'm terrible at this sort of stuff. So yeah, you know, hopefully you get what I'm saying with a little bit of the Captain Forever Remix vibe for building your ship, and also, um... A little bit of light Kerbal Space Program. It's not like we're going to launch this ship and it's just going to explode if it's built poorly. But it does have that kind of uh, casual degree of customization. So we've got a lot of... Well, we got 30 power left and 11 crew. So let's um, let's throw on a Tri-Stage Blaster. And we'll scale it up just because it looks more impressive. It looks more, you know, in line with the, the ship that we have going here. And we'll lower that below the dome. So it's just kind of poking out there. And then we got the... Uh, a blaster. This uses how much power? 15? Is that correct? It uses 15, so it's perfect. We got a lot of crew left, but not enough power. But that's okay. We can only have two weapons on this ship. That'll be fine. I probably built this a little bit suboptimally, but considering it's the tutorial, I'm pretty sure that this should be okay. So we can save this design if we want to. Yes. Save ship design. And let's launch this for this mission. You need the tri-stage turret. Oh, right. They won't let... <laughs> I forgot that we were still in the tutorial. They're going to force me to put on the turret here. Which means, actually, that I can't have this gun either. Okay, well, that's what you get for um, playing the tutorial and trying to do all this fancy stuff. Um, so let's put this just below the dome as well. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Let's launch this one. So yeah, even from the early game, at least in the press demo, they give you a really uh, impressive degree of autonomy over making your own ship, which I really appreciate. And this is the most fun part of the game for me, is the the ship building. I do think that uh, the, the other aspect of the gameplay comes across as a little bit more uneven. Partly that is due to the ship being, or the ship design being so cool. And you can see, like, this is easy to fly here. Two pirate fighters have been crippled by a gamma pulse. Let's finish them off. Right click the closest one to select it as a target. There we go, the camera will lock on. So yeah, you can see our ship works fine. Um, we're actually very, very fast because of those engines that I put on. That took a lot of power and a lot of crew, so... There we go, we're gonna get close. Now, this thing is gonna fire by itself, but again, this whole tutorial is about direct control, which means that uh, I can just turn to face the enemy and then right-click on them, and you can see that this tri-stage turret is actually really good. And this is actually really satisfying. With the turret, the left mouse button controls where it's aiming. It doesn't automatically follow your mouse, which means that you can move your mouse to click on other stuff without changing your aim. Uh, and then you click to basically aim and just get it going there. Um, which has been very easy so far. So this, again, allows you to have um, better control over the individual components. We've been caught in the Gamma Pulse, it's overloaded our engines. Um, oh, it's a little loud, but, um... Again, it allows you to have, um, to, to focus on one aspect of the ship. Like, for example, we could also direct control our wing if we wanted to, and that would make it easier for us to turn. Or we could direct control our engines if they still worked, because they've been disabled for this, uh, gameplay element here. But if our engines still worked, we could direct control them, and, uh, we'll be faster. So there's a little bit of, like, a micromanagement aspect that, that comes along with it that I actually think works pretty well. It does take some getting used to, and I think there will inevitably, inevitably be people watching this saying, like, well, it shouldn't punish you for being, like, like, uh, to, for, for taking a more macro view of things as opposed to micromanaging your individual components. And I do think there's some validity to that, but at the same time, it's kind of a, a cool and novel part of, uh, of the game's design, I think. And, and I appreciate that it's trying to strike out on its own there a little bit. So I've uh, almost completely repaired my engines. They're weak, uh, or they were weak, I should say, um, by that story thing that we had to deal with. But by picking up the scrap that enemy ships drop, we don't have any tractor beam or anything like that, unfortunately, to grab this scrap, so we gotta go get it ourselves. But by picking up this scrap and then going on uh, direct control... There we go. For it, like, we might be able to drive over here and pick it up. And then that'll give me, yeah, see it just repair it as soon as I pick that up there. And you can see this is, I think, our surplus of scrap right now. So we have 10 extra, 20 extra. I believe in the actual release of the game, this is what we're going to be using to, uh to buy the ships that we start with every time. So there's gonna be like a bit of a resource management thing going on, I imagine, that's like, uh, oh, should I spend like all of my scrap on some kind of dreadnought, or should I build like a light fighter ship that maybe can accomplish this? By the way, in case it was uh, not clear, you can still move while you're under direct, or while you have your turret under direct control. You don't have to worry about that. I will say um, that uh, this, this part of the game, like the actual gameplay that you end up doing, a lot of the time, it ends up feeling like a little samey. Like, after I've killed, like, three of these ships, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to move on to the next thing. Good job on the turret. When you're in direct control, components will be much more effective. Armor will be stronger, wings will be more agile, engines will be faster. If you pick up the scrap dropped by destroyed ships, direct control mode will also allow you to repair damaged components. Great work, fix anything else that got wrecked, and let's get back into the fight. So, yeah, the, the combat I don't think is 100% super engaging right now. 
So the question becomes, is the shipbuilding aspect enough to make up for the fact that the combat as of right now feels a little samey, a, a little repetitive? And I honestly think the answer is sort of, at least in its current state. And of course, keep in mind, this is uh, early in development, so things could get worse or they could get better. However, um, the, the fact that your ship is constantly different if you want it to be, um, based on the fact that you can just build it however you see fit. Like, it doesn't always have to be just one gun at the front of your ship. You could do a ship that's, like, super light and just has a little bit of a laser on it, and you try to get in touch with the enemies or get get in behind them and, and actually attack their core. Am I in direct? I am in direct control of this. Okay. Or you could have a ship that is, like, a heavily armored battleship, basically, but maybe it's only heavily armored on one side, and that's the side that you have your guns at. So you have to, like, come up alongside an enemy, and then you have, like, a gun battery on your side that you use almost like a, you know, an old pirate ship or something like that. So there's there's all sorts of cool variety inherent in that. But I also feel like it will be, at least presently, it feels like it could become a little too easy in that you just, like, build the same ship every time. And you kind of, like, you know, you create that repetitiveness for yourself. If you're like, I always build ships that look like this, then you're like, well, the gameplay feels very samey to me. Maybe that's not necessarily the game's fault, but it would be cool if there was uh, some incentivization to... Well, not even that. Just, like, if there was some mechanical difference between the fights, if there were different kinds of missions and stuff like that. Every mission, as of this point, um, boils down to basically destroy enemy ships. And I... Oh. What is going on here? Why have I turned around? I'm constantly turning around. One of my components maybe is damaged or something? Have I taken direct control over something I should not have? Let's just kill this guy and then we'll be done with it. This is a, another component I like, which is, you know, you, you kill your old ship, basically. They come back and they're like, hey, I want to be the strongest ship in the sector. And you're like, well, actually, I have unlimited resources. So I've decided to, uh, to come back here. I think it maybe is because I have direct control over my ship. So I have created... No, I don't know. No, I've, I've definitely taken some damage. You can see there. Okay, it's becoming very hard to pilot. So let's just kill this guy as quickly as possible. I can't lose to my old ship. Have you seen how much more visually impressive this ship is versus our old ship? Just start firing into the abyss here. So I think it would be cool if you had things like, um, you know, missions where maybe one mission is like a delivery run or something like that. So they're like, you've got this precious cargo. If you get hit too much, it's going to break. Um, but you need to be fast to outrun these enemy spitfires or something like that. That would be really cool, I think, and now they're going to take my ship as well, which, honestly, you can have it at this point, because it's, like, half broken. Um, but, uh, yeah, see, he's like, well, we're out of here, Captain! And then he's just doing spinners, but, um, anyway. Uh, it would be cool if there were missions like that, like a really fast delivery mission or something like that. It would be cool if there were missions that were, like, you're escorting a, a very fragile ship, so you'd be like, oh, okay, in my head that means I should incentivize, or I, I should prioritize building a ship that is, uh, more armored, and maybe, like, is a little bit of a tankier ship, but doesn't necessarily have, uh, it's not very fast, maybe. But mostly, uh, at least for right now, I'm like, I'm gonna build the biggest ship that I can build, because I can build the biggest ship that I can build. Let's try to make a, a weird design here. So, again, this gives us... Is that 100... Why do I have 138 power? I'm not sure why I have extra power there, but that's okay. Um, and we'll... Let's try using it a little different this time. We'll make, like, a... It doesn't necessarily have to be this big. But we can do, like, this poking out of the front. And then, um, circular armor. So I know how I said it was going to be different. It's not different at all. But we'll make... We'll try to make this a little bit more of an agile ship. So we'll put, uh, the circle armor here... We gotta protect the core, basically. And we still have a lot of power left, so we'll drop that. Mmm. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, uh, if we wanted it to be more agile, we should keep weight off of it, ideally. So let's put, uh, big wings on it. I, I know I said... It, it seems like I'm being counter, uh, productive here, but I think, you know, I, I really like this design of a ship, so we'll just line it up like that. Copy it, flip it, and then move it back over here, and then we'll lower the layers so it works. Uh, that seems pretty symmetrical, I think. And then we'll... We want to put more guns on it, obviously, because we were a little weak there. But we'll put uh, a lot of engine power on it so that we can reasonably be expected to go a little faster. We were a little slower on that last one. Like, the tri-stage ring engine is pretty sweet, but it does use a little bit more power than I'm comfortable with. We're going to put it on here, and we'll just have a huge engine that maybe fits under the, uh, yeah, like that looks kind of okay. Maybe we'll even move it, like, a little further in. Does this look okay, or does it look hideous? I think it might look hideous, and that's okay. Alright, so let's put some guns on it quickly. 
Um, I, I like, honestly, throwing on, like, a blaster. It would be really hilarious to make this with, like, super tiny guns, because I'm pretty sure that they still do the same amount of damage, but um, I gotta, you know, it's fulfilling my dream of building an enormous, you know, space battle cruiser here. So we'll lower this very low, like so, and we still have 40 power. Let's put a tri-stage bolt gun here. I can't stress enough that the shipbuilding aspect of the game is definitely the most engaging part of it so far. It's super cool, and uh, just being able to actually drive these things is actually a little bit of a wet dream in and of itself. Um, another blaster. Sure, we'll put that blaster in the middle here. I think that's a reasonable size for it. And we still have 15 power. I wonder if I could actually put, like, a shield up. How much does the shield cost? 10 power. Sure, we'll throw a shield, like, here, and then you can see, like, the radius it has will provide us with protection. But we could also make it, you know larger so it looks like Tony Stark's arc reactor or something like that and I don't think that makes it more effective but nor do I think it makes it more vulnerable so sure save ship design let's launch this one this will be the last mission that we do over the course of the video so far again as a, this is the one that blinded me a little bit as always uh, a little bit of caveat mTOR especially when it comes to Kickstarter stuff you don't know if it's actually ever going to finish hopefully it does uh, also this is a press demo. I don't think it's available to the general public, at least not as of yet. Um, so, it's not like you can get in and play instantly, at least as far as I know. The ship seems very, like, rotationally maneuverable, but not necessarily super fast. I'm just gonna let it, uh, fire itself, basically. I'm not gonna take direct control. I'm assuming that we're gonna be strong enough to kill most of this stuff. I don't know, there, there's a lot of stuff to be done with game balance, I'm assuming, because I pretty much have unlimited resources right now that's going to require you know, probably more skillful piloting in the future. But uh, I do think that this is a game that, even though it, it might be a little thin past its gimmick of being able to build your own ship and pilot it, it does function well on the back of predominantly that gimmick. And I, I think that's really cool about it. It, it has that kind of Captain Forever remix vibe, but a different tone to it. Uh, and, and it looks a little bit more, you know... Not uh, pulp sci-fi, looks a little bit more like hard sci-fi, not that I want to necessarily get into that. Um, but it's kind of like a little bit more of a, a realistically themed Captain Forever remix, if that makes sense. And I, I'm not hating on Captain Forever Remix at all, or saying that a realistic theme is necessarily objectively better. I'm just saying it, it's an interesting counterpoint to it. So, uh, that's definitely building your own ship and then trying it out is the most fun uh, part of the game. But if, if it really just accomplishes that, when it comes out, I feel like it could actually be kind of a, you could consider it a success. Um, it's it's really engaging to play, and there's still, uh, the balance thing is definitely something that needs to be taken out, or not taken out, sorry, taken care of as soon as possible. Um, but but even in its, its current state, it's got a, a reasonably cool gimmick that I think warrants at least paying attention to it. This is the sun that caused me to lose track of the enemies all the time. Alright, you just stay over here. So I'm fighting my old ship, and this will be really embarrassing because I shit-talked my old ship, but no, it, it sucks. Okay, we rule. I'm not sure if that's the end of the mission. It might be, though, now that we've destroyed it. Have we destroyed it? I thought we'd... Oh, yeah, that might be the end of the mission. That was a fast one. Or is it? We've way up. It is. We've won. We're the most powerful ship in the system, and there it goes. I hope you can save designs, so if you really like a ship, by the way, you could just choose to keep rolling with it. But anyway, um, that's going to do it for um, for defects. You know, th this is what you have basically available to you right now. I'm on the Kickstarter page. It's in Australian dollars. They're trying to raise 40000 um AUD. So I actually admittedly don't know how much that is. American, but at the same time, I kind of feel like I shouldn't concern myself with that. Uh, if you're comfortable with what you've seen and backing it, uh, then, you know, consider backing it, of course. I'm sure they could use the help, but at the same time, uh, you, you've got to be uh, mindful of the fact that it's Kickstarter, and with Kickstarter, of course, risks apply. So, uh, yeah, really, don't think this is necessarily, oh, oh, if you don't back this, they're not going to be able to make the game, and I'm going to try to tug on your heartstrings. That's not my job, is to be here to do that. My job is just to show off a game that I actually think looks pretty cool. It's up to you uh, how you proceed from there. Let me see if I can figure out when the heck it's coming out here. Um, it's already passed through Steam Greenlight. So, uh, I mean, that's not necessarily a surprise, but it's, it'll be available on Steam once it's actually out. Maybe I can control F here for a release. Coming soon, sw seamlessly swap your creations between platforms. We'll be holding an extensive alpha for Windows and Mac, with the full release also arriving on Linux, iPad, and Android tablets. We've released a lot of games in our development lives. Okay, though so that's all I can see here. Estimated delivery, May 2016. All right. 
So that's uh, about a year off. That seems like a, an actually reasonable time frame uh, for, for a game of this ambition and scope. But for now, this has been Defect. Uh, I will throw a link to the Kickstarter down there, but I really can't stress enough that you know I have not been paid for this video. And uh, I'm not necessarily encouraging you. You should be wary with Kickstarter. But be aware, you know, if you like what you see, at the very least put the game on your radar because it's uh, it's got a really cool kind of concept. And I'm a sucker for games that give you that kind of ability to, to create and tinker and then, uh, you know, actually test your, your tools out in the arena. But... For now, uh, I'll put that link to the Kickstarter. You can see more information if you're interested. And of course, uh, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.